Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. How do we develop a personal photographic style? Well this could be the burning question on every photographer's lips at some point in their life, whether at the start of a professional career or even just as a part of using photography as a creative output. Developing a personal style can be one of the most exciting and rewarding elements of learning photography. To feel that the pictures you are making truly represent you as a person can be really liberating. Really, it's the same as producing any form of media. Writers, artists, filmmakers, designers, musicians, they all strive to create something that represents their way of seeing, performing or thinking. Standing out from the crowd is extremely difficult in an age of media and image saturation. Anyone serious about a career in any of the creative areas I've mentioned, but perhaps most of all photography, has to work very hard indeed at trying to stamp their identity on their work and making it stand out as their own. But hold on, I hear some say. What if I don't plan on a career in photography and taking pictures for me is something I do to satisfy the creative urge in me? Well then of course that's fine. No one expects the millions of picture takers out there to want to become Cartier-Bresson and change the world with their photography just as they don't expect everyone who picks up a paintbrush to give Caravaggio a run for his money. However, what's interesting is that even the most casual shooter out there has something about them that makes a picture they take unique to them. Everyone has a different way of seeing the world, and that's part of what makes human beings so fascinating. You can give five people each a camera and one subject matter, and you will get back five different renderings. This is because no two people see the same thing in the same way and their unique way of seeing will dictate how they record it. In his book, Ways of Seeing, published in 1972, which examined how we view art, art critic John Berger said, and I quote, we never look at just one thing. We are always looking at the relation between things and ourselves, unquote. We shouldn't hide from ourselves and our personalities when it comes to expressing ourselves. We should be embracing it. The important thing here is to learn how to nurture our way of seeing to the point where we can use it to infuse our creativity, where every picture we take becomes our own and has our own identity stamped on it. We're going to look at some examples where a photographer's body of work has been characterized by their style and their personalities. The often stark look, clean lines and geometry of my own style are all influenced by and linked to aspects of my personality. I know what I want in a picture and it has to satisfy certain criteria. I've always been a very tidy person and I don't tolerate mess very well. So part of my urban photography has always been about wanting to tidying up the world and creating order in the chaos that I see. Sounds bizarre, I know, but this is how I've tried to express my personality with my pictures. Using our creativity to do this is where we start to find that all-important personal style. Knowing what drives us and what motivates us is the first step. I knew when I first started out doing landscape photography that my look was going to lean towards the more minimalist style. I was interested in uncluttered scenes with strong contrasts and clearly defined shapes and forms. This clearly transferred itself to the urban environment the moment I started shooting street photography. It wasn't a conscious decision I had made, it was a natural transition, it just felt right. I guess it was my personality taking over. Even now, when I attempt to do an urban landscape that borders on a traditional landscape, I find I'm still shooting in the same way. It's an automatic style thing that seems to just kick in for me. If you're not enjoying your photography, then clearly something isn't right. And perhaps it's because you feel that your pictures aren't representing you. If it doesn't come from the core, then you might struggle to satisfy that desire to create and showcase your world. Don't be afraid of failure when trying things out. I think it's really important to have a project to be working on. When I did my Man on Earth project back in 2012, it was a reaction to living in a fast-paced world in a bustling city and the non-stop day-to-day demands of it all. And I was looking for a way to express what it might be like to live in an alternative space where I could be the last person in the world perhaps, and around me there was only silence. I think projects are the best way to build a body of work that defines you. By setting out a narrative or theme for your work, you will be focused on the subject matter and the way you choose to present it. So these are two key elements of photography. 
simply by selecting a project that has a meaning for you, you will feel personally involved from the start and be more inclined to want to put your stamp on it. Let's look at some examples which differ markedly in style and substance. The American photographer Aaron Siskind, who was prominent in the mid 20th century, produced a series in homage to the painter Franz Klein. Siskind's roots were deep in the artistic community and after stumbling across a wall covered in brush strokes whilst on a trip in Mexico that reminded him of Klein's work, he came up with the idea of creating photographs with the dynamic feel of Klein's paintings. This is street photography in one of its most basic forms, but for Aaron Siskind, one of the most expressive. At the very opposite end of the scale is the work of Gregory Crudson, who stages cinematic scenes of American suburbia to really dramatic effect. What he's doing here is blurring the line between fictional narrative and reality. These are big production pictures where he controls every aspect of the image to create dreamlike scenes of mystery and suspense. Crewson has made a name for himself through this very defined style and his unique way of shooting. He's very much interested in the photographer's narrative, but in a way that asks questions and challenges the viewer to complete the picture. I think this is a strong device and asking the viewer questions about what they are looking at adds an extra layer of involvement for them. Now, of course, we can't compete with this level of ambition and complexity in our pictures, but I think the takeaway message here is the solid visual style that is present in his work. From the colour palette drawn from the time of day he shoots, down to the carefully structured framing and character positioning. These are instantly recognisable features of his work that help to identify him. Between the two extremes of Aaron Siskind and Gregory Crudson, and also quite different from a socially critical focus, we might look at the work of magnum photographer Bruce Davidson and his series entitled Subway. The series of photographs captured in the early 1980s were all taken on the New York metro system and its underworld. The pictures depict not only the vibrant personalities that were a big part of the transit system at the time, but also the light and colour that he used to illustrate it. Davidson was previously noted for his black and white pictures, but for this project he switched to colour to record the unique atmosphere. Davidson was quoted as saying, I wanted to transform the subway from its dark, degrading and impersonal reality into images that open up our experience again to the colour, sensuality and vitality of the individual souls that ride it each day. It was quite a dangerous undertaking as the subway was replete with violent gangs, but for Davis it was an aesthetic experience. When asked about it in recent years, he explained, I feel that there was a passion and a purpose to photographing in the subway. We were all in the same boat and I was just expressing the everyday occurrences in the subway at that point in 1980. With these three contrasting examples, we can see that each project is close to the style and personality of the photographer. There is a close connection between their pictures and the reason they chose a subject matter. Just a slight addendum here. I don't think that once you have defined a style, you have to stay rigidly within it but I do think that it's quite important to recognise certain boundaries if you wish to strengthen your position. For example, it might seem a little odd if Martin Parr would start shooting grungy night scenes like Dido Moriyama, or if Alex Webb were to turn his attention to street portraits in the style of Bruce Gilden. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this has been of some help for anyone who's trying to define their style with their pictures. Being true to yourself and expressing what you really see as a photographer is one of the most important things you can do. As ever, let me know what you think in the comments and please hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time. To see my street photography, visit my website at www.rupertvandervelle.co.uk and check out my book, Fine Art Street Photography, from how to use light to what to look for in a scene. Fine Art Street Photography shows you how to turn the urban environment into striking street images. This book is available on Amazon.